tuned to Culture on I-24 News. I'm Tal Heinrich, sitting in for our dad, Grover. Thank you for joining us. And today on our show, we will talk about the contemporary art world of the Middle East and North Africa, get to know a prominent Iranian pop star, and hear about a nostalgia attack coming up soon on TV. The Fertile Crescent is the region in the Middle East which curves like the shape of a quarter moon from the Persian Gulf to northern Egypt. It is regarded as the birthplace of urbanization, writing, trade and history. A relatively fertile land surrounded by deserts. It is also the title of a series of 10 lectures at Hamid Rasha Gallery, 19 Higher Khan Street in Tel Aviv. Each one of the lectures touches on a different artist, exhibition, or a scene from one of the Middle East countries, including Turkey and North Africa. With me here in the studio is the editor of these sessions, Avi Lubin, head of theory studies of the postgraduate program in fine arts at Beth Berel College, Hamid Rasha School of Art. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So first, tell us a bit the topics and the countries that these lectures are dealing with. Um, the first one was already uh, happened a, a month ago, and it dealt with Turkey, with the Istanbul Biennial, which is, uh, I think, one of the most important uh, biennials or uh, events in the art international art scene. Uh, the next, the, the next session will be at the end of January with Rafam Haddad, an artist that currently lives in Tunis, and will focus on Tunis. Ooh, wow, this yeah. picture is. A rebel's picture. Yeah, yeah but, but we'll focus on, on uh, things like the Kalandia Biennial here in Palestine and Israel, uh, on uh, artists from Lebanon, from Egypt, from Iran. Um, it's, I think there are many... Uh, I, when I started working on it, I didn't want to, um, to, to be very too specific about which artists or scenes are interesting for me. I chose the, t the, mm -hmm. the speakers, I, I, I chose According the guests. According to the people themselves, or they pitched the, the subjects No, no I, I, some of the people that I know that are dealing with uh, art scenes or artists from this region, and I, I felt interesting uh, lecturers, mm -hmm. and I invited them to offer to offer me a topic, to offer me an idea that they want to talk about in relation to this uh, and series of lectures. And, and after a dialogue with, with some of them, we, we understood what can be more interesting. So can you give us some examples of tendencies that you recognize in contemporary art in the Middle East, in these countries that you're dealing with? Are there certain trends that maybe us in the West were not aware of? Yeah, I think, first of all, uh, funnily enough, maybe it's, I think many of the artists that are, are working from, from Lebanon or uh, from Palestine, from Egypt, are really um, close in many things to the Israeli artists hmm. and dealing with, the, um, I think, different perspective of, of um, the same events or same issues. Um, and the funny thing is that you can see them a lot in Europe and in the US, but of course not here uh, because of the boycott and because of the political situation. So you can travel to London or New York or Berlin and see very good uh, art that is coming from our region. Um, and I think, uh, for example, we see here uh, Emily Jassir. We saw her a minute ago from an exhibition that just, just ended in, in London or is mm -hmm. maybe still showing. And she's dealing a lot with questions of history about, uh, she's a Palestinian artist, about, uh, about the relations between Israelis and Palestinians, uh, about specific events, about, about memory. Um, and, yeah. Avi, Avi, you know, uh, traditionally we tend to, um, you know, include the artist in, in the art scene to the leftist side of the political map, uh, regime oppositionists. Is it so? Is this generalization valid when it comes to Middle Eastern um, artists or other Palestinian artists? Any exception in this mm -hmm. realm? Yeah, I don't know if I would say necessarily the left wing or the left side of the political map, but I think that art has to ask questions about reality and has to be critical, to, has to, to give a unique uh, maybe look about Is it about possible things. with the censorship? In uh, the I think it is. Uh, it, as, as, as many times, most of these, the most successful artists from this region are actually working in Europe or in the, the US. So many of them are originally from a place, but, but then again, do not live there. 
Uh, but you can see, there, for, for example, this is why I wanted this series to happen, because, for example, if you go now to Cairo, to Egypt, mm -hmm. or to, to Beirut, there are really interesting things that are going, uh, happening there. And why are we not exposed to them? Uh, I think f from two reasons. F the first one is us, because uh, <laughs> Israel is always trying to look at the Arab countries. Or the West in general, not only yeah, Israel. But, but in the West, you can see, for example, a lot in the new museum in New York, one of the mm -hmm. most important museums, there was a very... Um, a very big exhibition a year ago mm -hmm. about it was called Here and Elsewhere about the art from the Arab wo world. Uh, in London now there was Emily Jassir in the Whitechapel. In the MoMA you have so it's now more Walid rare Ra. in Israel, you say. I, I think it's impossible in Israel because all of these artists would not ex uh, agree to to have to their works, here. yeah, or to, sh to to be, to do anything here. So it's impossible to do it here. Even if you want to do this series, it, it's really. Uh, probably it's really difficult first of all on the side of the, the speakers that many of them did not want to, to be part of it all right uh, it, it was difficult to, to convince many people to talk about Arab art uh, this is on the one side on the other side is that you cannot use any material coming from the artist because they would not agree so you can only use things that are open in the internet or free free, free to, to watch and, so can you point out some of the names of the Arab artists that maybe we should, you know, um, pay attention to? Yeah, I think um, may maybe people would know better, mm. uh, like the older generation, uh, artists like Mona Khatoum or Shirit Na uh, Shirin Nashet. But uh, now, now there are like many artists, for example, now in MoMA in New York, there's Walid Raad, a very big exhibition. Uh, artists like Akram Zatari. Uh, like Emily Jassir, Jumana Mana, uh, both Palestinian female artists. Um, so they are like, I think all over the world you can see now very interesting Middle Eastern. Do you see any dialogue between Western art and Arab art of the Middle East or there is no diffusion of such artistic ideas? Yeah, I think this is one of the reasons I chose to start with the Istanbul Biennial because I think this is the the place where it happens, like the tension, uh, the attempt to, to have a dialogue, but at the same time uh, a clash between the two cultures happens. And the first talk that the El Messer, a, a curator that was involved with the biennials in Istanbul, gave the, the talk about the history and the ideology uh, of the attempt to connect Istanbul to the West through this biennial, and at the same time uh, how it alienated like the local art and the local artists and the local scene. So we can say that the art is a reflection of a certain reality when it comes to the Middle East. Yeah, I think it's, it's always, I don't know if reflection, but it's maybe reflection on reality, not of reality. But um, uh, and it's, it, I think it always has to, has to be critical reflection and not necessarily uh, in the direct political sense, but it. Mm -hmm. So Avi, just tell us briefly what's the next thing, what's the next lecture coming yeah, up? So, so the, the next one will, will be Rafam Haddad, which is a, an artist from a, now lives in Tunis, and he's coming at the end of January a, to give a talk about the contemporary art scene in Tunis and some a, interesting events that are happening there. And afterwards we'll have a, people like Dor Gez, Khen Tamir, um, Rula Khouri, um, well, it's, it's a fascinating initiative, and the fact that you bring these people to Israel. Avi Lubin, thank you so much for coming to the studio. Thank you. Gugush was a popular Iranian singer and actress in the 1970s before she was banned from performing following the 1979 Iranian Revolution. In the year 2000, she managed to leave Iran and relocated to Toronto along with her husband. From Canada, she relaunched one of the most impressive comebacks in pop history. Danielle Compass brings us more on the story of the undefeated diva who continues to shine and tour the world 15 years later. Imagine if Madonna in her 1980s peak was to suddenly go into a forced silence of 20 years. Hard to imagine what a heartbreak it would have caused her fans. This is exactly what happened to Gugush. Gugush was born Faye Atashin to Azerbaijani immigrants from the Soviet Union. She started her career as a child star and became one of the most popular Iranian celebrities of the 1970s. Her songs topped the charts, and beyond just a singer, she was a trend-setting actress, a fashion icon, and a role model. 
Iranian women copied her mini skirts and haircut, known as the gugushi. She performed for the elite, such as Iran's royal family of Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. But after the 1979 Iranian revolution, her career would freeze for two decades, as she was banned from performing in the country. Gugush also served a three-month jail sentence because she was living with her boyfriend outside of marriage. But her silence turned her into the voice of a nation. Her fans refused to forget her. And even those who grew up during her period of silence learned about her. Her comeback came in the year 2000, when she surprisingly managed to leave Iran. Fifteen years after her comeback, the Iranian superstar is based in Canada and remains an icon for Iranians inside and outside of Iran. Touring around the world, and hosting her own talent show in the UK. In the past decade, the diva has also become a prominent human rights figure. In 2009, Gugush went on hunger strike in front of the United Nations in New York to show support for Iran's oppressed political dissidents. In 2014, she made headlines when she courageously promoted gay rights in one of her music videos titled Heaven. At the age of 65, the singer is not slowing down. She has already announced upcoming concerts for the year 2016. And although the landscapes of her music videos are no longer those of Iran, in her homeland, people continue to praise her and wait for the day in which Gugush will be able to openly return and perform in her native homeland. In a moment, we'll hear about the return of Full House and Gilmore Girls, but first, our cultural recommendation for today. The exhibition David Bowie Is is a unique retrospective of Bowie's work, highlighting many facets of his career. After experiencing success with London audiences, the exhibition is traveling to the Groninger Museum in the Netherlands. Over 300 exhibits, including handwritten lyrics, original costumes, set designs, album artwork, and rare performance recordings, were brought together from the David Bowie archives for the very first time. The exhibition delves into the musician's influence in music, art, design, and pop culture, and the way his work influenced others. It focuses on his creative process and changing style, and his collaboration with creators in the fields of fashion, sound, theater, and film. And we have here another undefeated diva to emerge from Toronto, Lauren Iso. Hi. Hello, thank you for that introduction. <laughs> Let's get I'm a honored. bit nostalgic um, and glorify these cult shows yes. that appeared on our screen in the early 1990s, right? Yeah, there was a whole chunk of time there, but uh, as you mentioned earlier, there is a spin-off of Full House. If that you're is... going to mention Uncle Jesse, we I'm know you're in. Ears. We know. Yeah. So, of course, Uncle Jesse, John Stamos, will be part of the cast of Fuller House, which is set to air February 26, 2016, and it's a project that has been undertaken by Netflix to get the whole cast together after 10 years. And we have a, a trailer that they released last week, so let's take a look at that. Gosh, it feels good to be back. Hey, can someone help me with these boxes? I'll grab little Tommy. Hey, Jesse, can you help DJ? I'm trying. Max, the hair, huh? Yeah, Max, cut it out. Cut it out. Jackson, can you watch your brother? I gotta find the keys. Yeah, yeah, I got him. You know I should have got movers. Dude, you don't need movers. You got us. Welcome home. That's it. I really wanted to see I them. know, but hearing it just makes me feel like I'm 15 again. It's so exciting to hear all those familiar voices. So they have Mary-Kate and Ash Ashley there, So right? Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen are not going to be appearing on the show, which is very unfortunate. They refused the offer from Netflix. Um, but the whole idea has been written into the script of the show that they are actually in New York, or she is in New York, Michelle Tanner, starting oh, her right. own fashion line, it was a, a, which is a, a, sort of an ode to her, to their fashion career, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, which is really cool, but I hope eventually they make some kind of I appearance on the, the show. I don't know if it's the same. It could be the same with 
without them. But of, Well, it's not the same because they're all 10 years older, but even still, it's really exciting. And they just announced that um, the classic theme song from the show, which I'm sure is playing in your head right now, na, 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 something like that. Na, na, na. So they're making a new version of the song with Carly Rae Jepsen, who is the Canadian pop star who sang Call Me Maybe. Um, so that should be really interesting to hear that and to see the new take on the show. I'm really excited about it. What else? What about Gilmore Girls? Well, Gilmore Girls is also being remade. Um, they're going to be making four 90-minute episodes of the show. Uh, so each episode is going to take place... I don't know if place... I can survive that. You can't survive it. It's not enough. <laughs> so each 90-minute episode is going to be taking place in a different season. And they're really... Um, I mean, they're coming to see where, where the characters have come to, how they've grown their new love interests. And unfortunately, um, the gentleman who played the grandfather in the show is no longer with us. He passed away last year. Um, so I'm sure there'll be some ode to his memory during the show. Lauren Iso, thank you so much Thanks. for this. And that's it from us for today. I hope you enjoyed our show. You can see past shows at i24news.tv and also check us out on Facebook or Twitter. And of course, join us again tomorrow.